everybody, I'm Reba Coker, the collections manager at the Johnson Hornet House Museum and I am a medievalist so I study medieval history and I'm really excited to talk to you guys today about manuscripts. Before we start the activity, I'm going to talk about um, a little bit of manuscript history, show you some vocabulary words, and then um, show you some actual examples from real medieval manuscripts. So first things first, what is a manuscript? A manuscript comes from the Latin uh, manu plus scriptus, which just means having been written um, by hand. So any type of note, scroll, book that has been written by hand is considered a manuscript. So it's really easy. Even your, um, your mom's grocery list that she wrote by hand on a piece of paper would be considered a manuscript. Um, printing didn't um, start becoming popular until after the printing press was invented by Johann Gutenberg in 1440. But even after printing um, starts becoming more popular, you still get uh, handwritten manuscripts. So what is a manuscript made out of? I'm sure you're sitting at home and thinking, well, our books today are made out of paper. And while that's a great guess, it's actually not quite right. Uh, manuscripts are usually made out of parchment. Parchment is just animal skin. Usually um, cow is the most common, but sheep and goat, sometimes deer, even squirrel could be used um, to make parchment. And this is what they used before paper. Paper doesn't become uh, commonly used in Europe until around um, 1450. So to prepare your parchment, you, you get your animal skin and you make sure it's nice and dry. And so you'll like stretch it and dry it for several days. And then you'll take um, a scraper and you'll scrape off all the hairs. If you um, see an actual manuscript uh, with uh, some good parchment, you can usually see which side was the hair side and which side was the, um, the inside part. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a good example to show you. The manuscripts that I have today are not, um, it's really hard to see the difference between the two. So after you have your page, you have um, your, your animal skin, your parchment, it's all been cut down to a nice little, you know, little rectangle, little page. Um, your parchment will be sent usually to a monk or a nun. During the Middle Ages, not very many people were able to read and write. And um, so most books are written by monks and nuns in a monastery. Monasteries actually become the first um, place that universities, that's where universities are, were uh, founded, was in the monastery. So your monk or nun, they get, your, they get the page, and they do a process called pricking and rolling. So Today, you write on lined paper. It's kind of the same concept that you will lightly draw lines on the parchment to make sure that when they're writing out their words, it all fits in the page and looks nice. Um, not every manuscript has been picked, pricked and ruled, but for especially like um, an expensive manuscript, this is really common to do. So before you start writing, you will kind of sketch out how you want your initials to look, how you want your script to look on the page. And then you begin writing. And during this time period, the um, handwriting is not your unique handwriting. So my handwriting looks different than um, Jen Bush, the director's handwriting. But if we were um, living in the 8th century in southern Italy, for example, our handwriting would look more like this. This is called Beneventin. And this is... Um, a very common script that was used in southern Italy between the 8th and 13th century. And your um, the scripts, they vary by your geography, but also by the time period. So if you are in England, um, your script is going to look a little different than if you are living in France, and depending on your time period. So if you are um, 14th century France, you're um, going to be using a Gothic script, and it's going to look very different than the Beneventin that I just showed you. So after everything is written out, you will then take your, um, your pages and give them to another monk or nun, and that's when they will start doing illuminations. So an illumination is just a decoration or an illustration. Um, usually you do have somebody else, but not always. Sometimes 
one person can do both the text writing and the illumination. Illuminations are more expensive. They use um, really fancy inks. So your blue, for example, like on this shirt, this would have actually been made from lapis lazuli, which is a very expensive um, gem. And then usually um, you're decorating the first letter and a fancy initial like this initial um, is an illuminated B with Bernard of Clairvaux in the middle. Sometimes your illumination can be huge like this. This is called a carpet page. It's from the Book of Kells. It's a very famous page. But sometimes, um, you know, they can just be little decorations around um, the page, which we call marginalia. So marginalia is just a long word that comes from Latin that means um, it's a mark that was made near um, the main text but isn't the main text. So up here, my little scribble, that can be considered marginalia, my little hand, and this little note that I made for myself that says can be anywhere. So marginalia just means any type of scribble, doodle, note that isn't part of the main text. And some of them can be really cool. So this page is from the Smithfield Decretals. And the bottom, this is an illumination, but it's also considered marginalia because it's not part of the main text here. And if you get closer, this initial would be considered illumination. But up here, this is illumination too, but this would be considered marginalia. And all these little underlines and the notes, those are marginalia as well. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of background before we start and the next part is the exciting part where we actually start our own um, illuminated matrix scripts. For the illumination activity, um, you should have a bag. In your bag will be a pencil, watercolor paper, a watercolor palette, glitter glue, a paintbrush, script and doodle inspiration, instructions and fun facts. You will need clothes to paint in. Watercolor comes out of clothes very easily, but you might want to wear a paint shirt. And then you'll need a cup of water. If you don't have a bag but would like one, they are available until August 30th for $5 each. Contact us at 740-622-8710 to make an appointment to come in to grab a bag. If you want to complete the activity and don't want to come get a bag, you can still do that. Um, if you don't have watercolors, I suggest using markers. Markers will work just as well. Okay, so first thing, you're gonna pick a word. I am going to write my name. So I'm just gonna write it out like this. So you don't have to use these. I did do one, a finished one. This is kind of what it's gonna look like. I did use these, but you don't have to, um, especially for younger kids, it'll be easier if the parent or if they'd want to write their name out or whatever word makes you happy. And then um, really you're just gonna decorate it. So I like to use these little inspiration sheets to kind of help me figure out what I want my letters to look like. So um, you can really make them look however you want. I'm just gonna start with a nice fancy R and maybe I'll do one of these I'll come back to it. And then this little guy, I want to make into a cat because I'm obsessed with cats and I love them so much. And then I'm just going to make it a little tail. And then for the bee, I'm going to do another one of these. Maybe do some spikes. And then move that out of the way. And then for the A, let's make it into a fish. So my little eye, make him a fin, and then make this his bigger fin. And then give him a little fin down here. So I'm going to make my letters look like this for now. And then um, I would suggest doodling out any type of marginalia you wanna do. So if you want to make, um, a little uh, sea monster, you'll go boop, boop, little triangle, and then loop, loop, 
when you make his little head, it's kind of like boxy. And then give him little horns and open mouth and eye. And then kind of, this is where he'd be coming out of the water. Then it'll add spikes. I'm not the best drawer. That's okay. You don't have to be. Then you just add whatever you want around it and then you'll start painting. So with watercolor, <laughs> don't throw your brush like I did, but with watercolor, um, you want to get your brush wet first and then whichever color you wanna use, I'm gonna use uh, red first. You put your water in it and kind of move it around. And depending on how much water you use, I'll show you up here, it will change the color. So this is what it looks like. But if I used even more water, it'll be a lighter color. And then you can go over it several times and make it darker. And one cool thing about watercolor is that if I wanted to mix colors, I can mix colors and make it super cool. So you can put whatever colors you want on top of each other. And when they dry, depending on how um, even you got it, you can see um, where it's darker. So like with my water here, you can see that I did the blue a little darker here and I have purple in it. So when it dries, it you get a really cool effect. But if you wanted a really vibrant color, use less water. So if I can get this to work, it's this. Is like this. So then you pick your colors. So I'm going to use yellow because yellow is my favorite color. And I'm just going to start painting. And then I decided just a moment ago that I want to do polka dots. So I'm going to do red polka dots. I'm just going to kind of put them in. I also really like how when you put in a dot or something, it spreads throughout. So it can also help you mix color if you just want to dot it. And if you wanted to, you could dot it and then like do this and that will change the color. But see how you can, you can still see the dots, but it mixed the colors in the middle. Then for this B, I don't think I want to do extra waves. Let's do the cat next. Um, orange cats are cute, so let's do orange. You can just go right over his little face because you can still see the pencil through it. If you wanted to, after you color it in, go over any details with a marker or more paint, you can definitely do that. I might try that in a second. I'm also going to add a little bit of brown. And every time I go to change a color, I'm gonna take my brush and dip it in the water. So that way when I put it back on the palette, it doesn't mix in the palette, it only mixes on my paper. So then, just a little, little brown. And the watercolor doesn't take very long to dry. So if you want to mix colors more like what I did over here with the water. You need to do it while it's wet. So for this B, let's do this blue up here. And then hurry up while it's wet and grab the purple. And then see, now it's gonna be, it's gonna look different than if you waited until the blue was dried and then put the uh, purple over it. And you can do that with any color. You can mix them however you'd like. I'm not the best painter either, as you can tell. But it's okay because I'm having fun and that's the most important part. And you can keep um, adding uh, water to it if it dries and you're like, oh, I wanted to mix those colors. You can take your brush, so let's do, let's do this yellow here. I know I just did yellow, but like I said, it's my favorite. And if I wanted to mix it, 
and it's dry, I can just add water to it here and then go in with a clean brush to a different color. So let's do it with the blue and see what color greenness makes. See? You can just do one of these. Sometimes they will run together, but you get a really cool effect. Like with this snail, I did the orange first and then I started um, mixing colors in here and they kind of, it was too wet. So they it sucked up all the pigment and made these really cool um, tie-dye looking colors. So you just keep experiment. You can experiment as much as you want with different techniques or, um, you know, with different colors. And it's definitely recommended that you do that because it's way more fun to mix colors. So I am just, ooh, look how dark that is. It looks really nice. And then I just kind of put it over here. See, these ran together, and that's going to look really cool once it dries. You have the little green here at the bottom. You can make animals out of your letters. You can just do different patterns. You can just paint them in, like, block forms, so just all one color. It's really up to you and what you think looks the best. And if you wanted to do this again without watercolor paper, you can use um, normal paper. You just have to let it sit and dry a lot longer. I am using a normal type of paper for this. And I just kind of put it on here. And as um, you spread your paint down, it will get lighter. So you might have to like go back through with your um, whatever color you're mixing on top. And then for my fish, I'm going to do a really wacky colored fish. Kind of like the rainbow fish. You guys know rainbow fish? So I'm gonna do them in like weird dots. So it looks more like scales. But then when I go to mix my colors and put in other ones, it's gonna look really cool. And if I wanted to mix these a little better, I could just add water, clean water, to the to the little thing, paper, like this. And now this is more of like a tealish color. And I can add like a little drop here, spread it around. I'm gonna come in with some purple. It's just mostly about having fun and experimenting with color and doing what makes you happy. Lots of colors together make me happy, which is why my fish looks like this. <laughs> I really like when there's a lot of water on there and you take a color and you kind of like push it on there and it goes boop. Sometimes that happens, that's fine. So once you kind of get this the way that you want it, so let's go in and see about painting the cat's face with a little black. Give him some eyes. Nope, not enough color on there. This might not work as well as I want, but that's okay. Because then I could also go in with some brown, kind of make it look a little better. So you don't like something the way a color looks. It's really easy to add different colors and make it look um, different so you can fix whatever you mess up. It's not like with acrylic where you can completely paint over it, but you can add different colors to change the way it looks and it's really easy to just paint over it. So this is what I have so far. It's very different from this other one that I made. Um, but after you finish painting everything, I guess I should paint my dragon. Let me paint my dragon first. Oops. And it's okay if you get out of the lines because the next step after you finish painting, you're gonna go over everything with um, glue. And I will show that to you in one second. Let me speed paint this really fast. See, I started here and I had the most pigment 
And because it started getting dry and I lost water, I think it became a lot lighter. So go back in and get some more pigment and brush it on there. So once you finish all your painting, you're gonna take your glue. You will have either um, silver or gold. And this is because in an actual manuscript, especially expensive ones, they're using real gold and um, really expensive gems to make inks. And the gold leaf is the most expensive and it always looks really nice. So you're gonna take your glue and you're actually going to outline it. This might be hard to see and you have to make sure this is dry. So do make sure this is dry so you're not gonna smudge it. Um, you're going to then outline your work, which is why it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines, because once you get the glue on there, especially since you guys have either a gold or a silver, it's gonna cover up any mistake you might've made. So it's very forgiving. You can just sit over here and outline it. And if you don't wanna outline everything, you don't have to. I'm, I got a little much there, so I'm just gonna buff it out. But you don't have to follow the exact um, structure of every stroke you made. So with this, I didn't connect it here because I think it looks nicer if I just go around. But this will also help it stand out. So any place you want it to look extra fancy, just go outline it with your glue. So like here, I'm just going to um, go ahead and go around the cat, but not do the cat's face. I'm getting a little crazy with my glue. Parents, you might have to help um, the younger kids with this part because the glue does kind of stick a little. It's kind of hard to get out of the bottle, but you'll just kind of outline it. And it will definitely, yours will definitely look a lot better because you can actually see your glue and mine's clear, it's just sparkly. And then when you're done, with your glue, you're gonna have to let it sit um, for at least two hours, but I recommend leaving it sit flat overnight because that way you guarantee that it will um, dry. Otherwise, when you lift up the page, it's gonna run down and it could you know, go all over everything that you made. Especially like if you didn't want glue in a certain spot, you really need to make sure it's dry first. Um, so yeah, you just go over every, anything that you wanna go over for emphasis and you're done. You, um, it's really fun, you just have to be creative and do everything that makes you happy. You can do words um, like sunshine or fun, it doesn't matter. You can use your name, it's really up to you. This whole project is um, something just for you to express yourself and just, have fun creating different shapes and mixing color. Like, look how good the colors look in the fish. See, just because I dotted it and wanted to see what would happen. So have fun with it. Please tag us in any photos. We would love to see your artwork. Um, so you can um, comment on the video on Facebook and we would be very, very excited to see your work. So thank you.